the Green Man Bucknell slow version. Spotlight, Andy. I'll just say um, welcome to the uh, Playing for Morris uh, workshop uh, from the Tabra Society, run by Andy Richards and Ollie Simons and Fizz Markham. Fizz okay, right. So um, thanks for coming and, and not being on an Easter egg hunt for the moment. Um, this is all about um, building on the skills that we covered in the um, in the Shepherd's Hay Bucknell um, Beginners Workshop. And, uh, and Bucknell is just a fantastic tradition. Of course, it's the tradition uh, where they, um, they always had a pipe and tabor player all the way through. And um, so we're going to be using the fantastic Bucknell um, steps and style as, as danced by, of course, the wonderful Ollie Simons. Um, so what we're going to start with is, uh, is is the principle we covered in the last um, the last session, which is really the fact that if you're a Tabor playing for Morris, um, you really need to be um, dancing, dancing the dance in your head or physically. So, um, so it, obviously, if you're not able to, uh, if you're not able for some reason to 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 do it today, then just do it in your head. Otherwise. Um, if you can get up now, and then we're just going to have a, a little go at just dancing the um, dancing the steps of the foot up. This is just going to get all of our brains moving, apart from anything else. So, <clears throat> so hopefully you're all uh, you're all in a, in a place where you can actually um, move a few inches. Anyway, so basically. Um, the, the foot up is going to be uh, like like the shepherd's hay foot up, so it's a uh, left right left hop right left right hop left hop right hop jump land left right left hop right left right hop left hop right hop jump land okay, <clears throat> and of course in the real dance it's a little bit quicker than that, so it's more like Left, right, left, hop, right, left, right, top, left, top, top, jump, land, left, right, right, left, right, top, left, top, right, top, jump, land. <clears throat> okay, now through this, if you've got any questions, you can submit them to Fizz the Quiz, who will 
Fizzler Quiz will be doing some wonderful quiz mistressing during the course of this. And we're going to have Q&A at the end. Basically, that's our stepping for the foot up. It's the beginning of the dance. It's how the dance starts with that foot up. So let's have a quick look at um, the fact that we're going to need to attach our tabers and, and um, hold our sticks. So hopefully you've, uh, you, you, you've sorted out how to attach your tabor. It really does need to be uh, in a state where it can move with your body if you're getting quite excited about playing and, and be kind of quite, quite stable. And your stick needs to be nice and wobbly. So wobbly stick is a good thing to have. And uh, I expect Ollie's probably at this moment going out and um, finding a stick in his hedgerow or something. <laughs> I think he's lost his. But anyway, <laughs> or maybe he'll use a Morris stick. Anyway, you need a nice wobbly stick. Right. So uh, what we're going to be using a lot of in this workshop is, um, is the basic tabering um, style that we were using in the beginner's workshop which I'm calling mid-edge. There are lots of different ways of playing um, playing pipe and table for Morris. So this is definitely not the only one, but this is a really good one. Um, it's kind of, it will, it will work really well in lots of different situations. So we're going to be using this. So um, we're calling it mid-edge. So mid-edge, 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 mid-edge. Edge, mid, edge, mid, edge, mid, edge, mid, edge, mid, edge, edge. Okay, so um, the tune that we're using is um, it's a really nice tune from from the 17th century Playford English dancing master that's been adapted for for the for the Bucknell steps. So um, so in terms of mid edge, it goes like this: mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid. -edge, mid -edge. <laughs> mid, mid, sorry. Mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid. Mid. <clears throat> okay. Mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid. Mid mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid edge, mid. Okay. That's our um, that's our mid edge basic tabering. Now. When you see Ollie dance this jig, you'll see that he's doing this <clears throat> really fine um, handkerchief movement where he's <clears throat> bringing the handkerchiefs down in a um, what's known as a quick down. So just to show you a quick, quick down. <laughs> So what we're aiming with the Tabor to do is to really help the dancer feel like we're helping them do that quick down. So, so when we're doing the mid-edge thing, instead of just doing mid-edge, 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 we're going to go Land. Okay, let's have that one more time. Land. Okay, so that's our um mid-edge and we're doing all of that. All of that happens in the foot up, which is the first part of the dance, but it happens three times during the dance. Okay, so um, we are now in a position where um, I'm gonna hand over to the wonderful Fizz of the Quiz, who is gonna ask a question. Fizz of the Quiz, just... ask your question. Hello everybody. First question, is which famous classical composer 
collected the Bucknell Morris dancers. Answers in the Q&A, please. Ah, right. So, very, very famous person. Um, if it helps you at all, he wrote a a um, a famous diary about it called his Diary of Morris Dance Hunting. <laughs> so, um, it'd be interesting to see how many of you get this. Um, quite a famous composer. Oh, that didn't help you much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a he, and he's not as famous as Vaughan Williams. Ah, okay. How are you getting on Fizz at the Quiz? With I'm your... only getting Vaughan Williams at the moment. You're only getting Vaughan Williams, okay. Um, but there might, but oh, there might be some other composed, but uh, worthy it's composers. Some, some worthwhile answers. But uh, worthy composers, surely. But yes, are there any more coming up? <laughs> <laughs> Just slightly too long, people. <laughs> yes! Yay! Yes! Mr. George Butterworth, yes. Yes. Um, there's, yeah, there, there's some fantastic film stuff you can see about George Butterworth. Um, and it, it's it's really worth seeking out. It's really quite wonderful uh, the impression he made on on uh, on people in France actually in the the village where he was stationed during World War One. Yeah, and some amazing composition. But yeah, it's it's all it's fantastic the work he did to to get the Bucknell team together to uh, you know at a point it, it seemed like it was going to be impossible. But he you know he kind of galvanised them into action. What a wonderful man. Right, we are going to hold our pipe now. That's something, of course, we've covered before. You can, of course, have the little uh, cheeky device on the end to hold your pipe, get your fingers around that. I'm just gonna do the virginal thing where I'm gonna put my two fingers at the above and thumb underneath and make sure that it's all really, really covered. Right, so, so for this tune, um, we're going to um, we're going to be really trying to um, blow from the diaphragm and um, try and get some really nice sounds when we start playing the pipe. But let's just start by um, tonguing the music, uh, blowing from the diaphragm. So, so that A music goes da da di pa di 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 di. So let's try tonguing it. So we're gonna pull up our pull up our lower lower core muscles. Engage those. So I'm sort of engaging, pulling up down here, and I'm trying to make sure that I can blow from this area. And we're going to, um, we're going to, if necessary, just, just hold this area. That might help you actually think about the fact that you really are blowing from there in a kind of a controlled fashion. Let's just do some tonguing. Okay, so that's our tonguing, our blowing from here. Nice controlled blowing. Right, let's do a scale. We're going to be using all all the uh, notes of the D scale except the bottom one. But let's let's get the bottom one for reference. In fact, let's get the useless note. That uh, the note of doom, the Tabor's note of doom, is of course with all fingers on, blowing very softly, and then we're going to blow harder to get our bottom D. So let's get our bottom D and let's let's try and have this core engaged and blowing from the diaphragm. And then we're going to gradually go up the scale. One finger off, two fingers off. 
Montreal. Even blow. Next ringer off. And blow harder again. So if we have that royal control, we can start to actually make it sound kind of quite nice. Let's try that again. Okay, so <clears throat> that's a little thought about trying to control those those notes. Right, let's um, let's get this uh, this A music going then. So, so we're going to be starting on that one. That's the B. So make sure you're really comfortable with your B. Okay, and then it's going to go up to the ID and back down. So we're going. That's the first part of the A music. Get that with your core, with your nice breath. And what you can do for any, any of these notes is do a little bit of breath vibrato. So you can just, with your core engaged playing, you can go. So I'm just getting some breath vibrato to make it sound a bit better. That tends to work more effectively on the longer notes. So let's see which longer notes we're going to start finding. <clears throat> right, so that's the start of the A music. And now we come down. So this is all fingers on. And then we repeat again. And then we're going to go Uh, let's do all that again. And that that ending note in particular, that's going to be really nice if you can get some real <clears throat> breath control and get a nice um, breath be bright on that. Okay, that's our A music on the pipe. So, um, the next thing to think about is the fact that um, we've already talked about the, the, the quick downs and the jumps. So let's just play that A music, just thinking about how that might affect these, these uh, quick downs and jumps. So really on, on the quick downs, the thing that seems to work quite well for those is to really clip those notes and blow, blow really, you're trying to make sure you get the right note, but you're trying to act as if you're actually adding some power to those, those handkerchiefs that are coming down. So, okay, so we're just trying to <clears throat> make those, those Yum da di dum da di. And then the jump at the end, again, we're cutting that off to power Ollie into the air. And then as he lands. Okay. <clears throat> So we're doing all of that with the pipe. Right, let's do the B music on the pipe as well. So. <clears throat> right, so there's a little preparatory note. So it starts on that B as a little preparatory note. Okay, there, there is there is a, a music sheet on the web page that was associated with the um, with this. If anybody needs uh, the music, you can get it from there. 
Anyway, let's just carry on with the B music. So, so we're starting with that uh, that note B, coming down to the A. Okay, let's try it again. And again. And again, here is another place where you can do some really nice breath control to get that breath vibrato. Works really nicely on that last note in particular because you're holding that for a while. So then going like that. So the G and then. Okay, so let's try all that bit again. And then it goes. Let's try again. Okay, so that's <clears throat> that's our B music on the pipe. Right. So let's uh, let's get the pipe and tabor. My tabor. <clears throat> See if we can get some of those things working together. So let's try the A music, and remember we're doing this mid edge thing. And if we can, we're trying to get the emphasis for the quick downs. So let's just give that a quick go. Here we go. I'll do it slowly first. Okay, and then let's try it just a little bit faster, more at sort of dance speed. Okay. Okay, so we have done, we have done the, uh, the A music to mid edge with the quick down and the jump. <coughs> Okay, right, so let's have a look at, um, yeah, right, okay, so I think, I think at the moment that's enough and it is time for Fizz of the Quiz. It's over to you, Fizz of the Quiz. Hit us with your quiz question. Hello, everybody. I just need to adjust. Thank you. So, after much dancing and drinking, to what was a Bucknell Taborer tied to keep him upright? Answers in the chat, please. <laughs> so I suppose the question is, if you were a Bucknell Taborer, what would you like to be tied to? <laughs> well, as, you know, that might be a question, but that isn't the question. The question is, <laughs> what, what's... What was the Bucknell Tabra tied to? Yeah, well, we got one answer there. It's a tree. Yeah. Tree. Yeah. Do we have any other answers? The barmaid. <laughs> the barmaid. <laughs> I think I've known some travelling Morris tours where that might have been an option. <laughs> we have a tree or a box of water for Andy. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, okay. Any more? Okay, right. Well, so the answer is indeed a tree, and it is indeed the tree that was outside the Trigger Pond pub in Bucknell, which is a pub where Ollie Simons has danced, of course, and <laughs> he is showing us a small pink <laughs> bucket stolen. Oh, sorry, um, obtained from the. <laughs> 
from the Trigger Pond pub. <laughs> Of course, the barmaid might be tied on the other side. Yeah, she might well have been. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. Yeah. So yeah. So that was the idea. Was that um, was that if the Tabra became too inebriated to stay upright, they could carry on playing or uh, being tied to the tree. <laughs> oh dear. Yes. Anyway, um, I'm not sure whether I'm actually encouraging that as a as a technique, but you know, if you want to give it a go you could do right so we've we've gone through the a music so um so after the first after the first um foot up um there's some clapping to the b music where we we don't need to do any tabering so that's kind of quite nice we've kind of already covered that haven't we We don't need to tabor in that because, you know, Ollie's doing his fancy cla clapping business. <laughs> he does it so well. Okay, so that's that bit. Then what he does is, or what the dancer does, is a, a salute. One hand salute with the other. Um, and then uh, a move that happens an awful lot in, in Bucknell. So it's really good if you're going to do any playing for Bucknell to get really used to this, this move. Might even be worth trying doing it, doing this move. It's basically a left, right, left, right, left. Let's try that again. Left, right, left, right, left. Left. Right, left, right, left. It happens an awful lot in Bucknell. It's it's kind of one of their signature moves for the tradition. And it's, of course, great on the Tabor. It's just absolutely fantastic on the Tabor. Um, so if you want to Tabor it, it's going to be... It's going to... Ooh, it's going to be something like... So, yeah, you've got some options. You can, you can move to the edge if you want. But it's probably easier to stay in the middle. So you're trying to give that lift the up, two, three. That's what's going on with, um, with that left, right, left, caper, caper. Right. So, um, so the, the tabering as a whole in that whole section is going to be salute, salute, left, right, left, right, left. Okay, that's our tabering in that section. Let's try that. Let's just try that with the pipe and tabor. Okay, ready? And. Okay, let's try that again. One, and. Okay, so that's that, that's that little section, quite fun. So then we're gonna get, be getting on to um, the sidestep section. And what's basically happening here is that the dancer is gonna be, um, they're going to be doing um, going to be doing a side step. Um, right, left, right, hop, and then they're going to be doing a double step. Left, right, left, hop, and then they're going to be turning around. So Ollie's going to be turning around, and he's going to be going right, left, right, hop, left, right, left, hop, and his arms are going to be pointing up for the side step and then a quick down for the double step and then pointing up and quick down. So what we're going to do in terms of tabering is we're going to be, um, and, and interestingly in this section we don't have any, um, we, don't, we don't actually have any um, pipe playing. 
Uh, this is just a percussion break. <laughs> well, we can do this. We're tabrers. Um, so the, the tabering is going to go. In those bits. So let's try that. And side step, double step, side step, double step. Okay, so that's that section. And then we've got the really wonderful thing in Bucknell. This is just creme de la creme Bucknell. We have two double capers and double capers are just completely glorious. And if you have a chance to, to do a double caper to make your day, here is your chance now. So, so basically um, the leg is going to go out and out in out and out, in, out and out, in, out and out, and that's how they go. Now we have uh, two double capers here. <clears throat> so just the two, so out and out, in, out and out, in, and it's gonna be followed by the, the signature thing that we looked at earlier, which is the left, right, left, right, left. So if we translate that into tabering, Actually, yeah, let's, so I better show you, I think, the Tabor side of it. So, um, so for those double capers, we're going to go like this, out and out, in, out and out, in. Okay, so you need a really, really nice floppy stick hat hold for doing um, Bucknell double capers. And you're coming from quite a, quite a big way out. And you're just flicking down and going out and out, out and out. So what's actually happening here is we're starting a roll with like a big <clears throat> throw of the stick towards towards the tabor, and we're just allowing it allowing it to bounce to get that out and out, in, out and out. Whoops, out and out, out and out, in, out and out, in. So what's happening is you're you're allowing it to bounce, then you're controlling it a bit to get that the rest of it out and out, in, out and out, in. and it's something really to practice in your own time. But it's just such a glorious mo uh, movement. So the whole of this section, then, it's the side steps, double step, side step, double step, out and out, in, out and out, in, and then the signature up, two, three, keeper, keeper. So let's just try that in our tabering time here we go and side step double step side step double step out and out in out and out in okay that's that section and it's worth it's, it's worth working on in your own time it's such a glorious set of steps you get in Bucknell they are absolutely fabulous Right, so after that we have a, a foot up like like we've done before and we have clapping like we had before except it's alluringly the buttock or something but it doesn't matter what it is, does it? It's not going to affect our tapering. <laughs> so so we've done, uh, we've done our um, foot up and our clapping. <clears throat> so um, let's try... Um, Let's try the fact that, um, right, okay. So what happens after that is that, um, so Ollie's done his clapping, clapping, and he's then going to um, be doing um, double capers at this point. Um, so, so we need to do, um, we need to do that right so so i'll just i'll just play this whole section for you and then we'll and then we'll get on to it okay so basically what he's doing he's doing four of those double capers and then that signature 
up to three paper paper. So <clears throat> let's just try tabering tabering those four capers and the, that signature phrase ending. Here we go. Okay. Let's try that once more. Okay, let's try it with the pipe. Here we go. And again, let's try it again. Okay. So we have done the double caper glorious section. I see Ollie was sweating away. He is so excited by the Bucknell double capers. And now, talking of excitement, it's time for Fizz of the Quiz. What have you got for us now, Fizz of the Quiz? Well, it's skullduggery. Skulldug skull <laughs> On Whit Monday in 1826, why didn't William Rolfe dance with Bucknell Morris? It was actually a very pertinent reason for his absence. Mm. Answers in the, uh, the uh, Q&A, please. Wow. He was in prison. Yeah, there's one Peter person. Canson. Oh, Peter Canson. Yeah, any other suggestions? Do we have any other suggestions? Are we getting any other suggestions? It's actually, well, criminality is certainly a thing, but it's even more specific than that. It's something that he, he did in crimin criminal in relation to the Morris side. They left him on the tree. <laughs> Do we have any more answers? Any suggestions? Uh, the prison is correct, actually. So Peter's done really well. Does anybody know why he was in prison? I don't think they do. No, they don't know? Okay, right. So basically... Um, yeah, Bucknell Morris went out every Whit, Whit Monday and um, and they took their the appearance of their kit really seriously. They had a, a kit inspection at the start of their Whit Monday tour. And uh, and if they didn't pass the kit inspection, they, they didn't get paid. And then the pay was very significant. Uh, anyway, two days before Whit Monday, um, this fine upstanding dancer of Bucknell Morris was arrested for attempting to steal 12 yards of ribbond in an Oxford ribbond or haberdasher's shop. So, <laughs> so in 1826, that's why he wasn't dancing for Bucknell on Whit Monday. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at the next section. So we've done the excitement of the double caper, which is truly exciting. So next we have um, a foot up like before. So we've done that. We don't have to worry about that. And then what's going to happen is um, instead of normal clapping, um, there's going to be a clap where um, our dancer is going to leap into the air as they perform the clap. So like this. So they do the clap and, and they go into the air. Clap. And the other way, which is hard if you've got a pipe and take let's get rid of this pipe here. <laughs> so, so. So it's going to be that. Um, so what we need for that is uh, we need to propel our dancer into the air. Um, at the right time and um, so with this tune obviously with this this B music we got so 
So what we have to do is make sure that we're we're not tabering on that preliminary note, that we're 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 tabering him into the air on the. Okay, let's just try that again. Okay, so that's our, um, our little jumping section there. And of course, Ollie's very good at leaping into the air. Um, and he has a special aerodynamic baldric on today, which assists him in flight. <laughs> right, so that's the leaping into the air. And then the, the sort of like the grand finale of the jig, really, are the, uh, the upright capers. Let's just have a look, little look at those, what they comprise. So basically what's going on here is that you are, you're moving your seat out of the way. <clears throat> After you move your seat out of the way, what you're basically doing is you're you're doing a little preparatory move where your foot goes back as a dancer and then it comes forward you get your feet together and then it's just a bit lower and then you do your star jump <clears throat> that's what's happening and so in in um, in Morris in Morris Tabor terms what you're trying to do so you're trying to build the tension here. So it's a bit like, you know, when you might have a roll of a drum, you know, when somebody's going to do some amazing feat of unicycling with fire or something. So, um, so, that's how it's going to go. So what we really want to be happening on the Tabor is something that's really going to be building up building up that tension. So it's going to be something like this. And then powering Ollie into the air. So again, we're using the really lovely flexible stick hold that we have. And we are doing a, some nice rolls. And it's really up to you how you want to do those rolls. A lot of, I'm sure a lot of opportunities for creativity here, but the way I'm going to do it is like this. Let's just try that again. And once more for luck. And then we've got the phrase ending, standard phrase ending again. Okay, where we're lifting and and caper caper. And that's the end of it. Let's just try that with the pipe and tabor. So Just try it again, once more for luck. Okay, and while we're on this this section, it's quite interesting. You can you can sort of make a bit more of that dramatic start by putting a nice little bit of a trill at the beginning. So you can go, let's just do it without the tabor. So, so I'm gonna start with a trill. So it's an upper note trill um, on that, um, on that, ugh, what's that note that is in? That one there. <clears throat> so we're going to go. And instead of doing that, we're going to go. And we're going to do that. 
So the whole thing. And went, why not? Why won't we just do this? Because, you know, let's milk it. I mean, the dancer is doing all this exciting stuff. Why wouldn't we do some exciting stuff? So let's have a look at the whole of that. So you get that nice contrast between the florid stuff that you're doing with your really fabulous tabering as you're lifting Ollie or whoever it is into the air and then this really nice driving finish. So let's just try that, see if we can get that nice decoration on the pipe with the tabor. Here we go. And One more try, okay. Well, hey, let's do it one more time. Here we go. Okay. So, so we got all of that. <clears throat> so I, I think it'd be rather good actually, as we got Ollie there, if we, um, let's just, uh, let's just see if we can uh, do the whole, the whole thing um, to the sort of speed that I think Ollie is going to do it at. And we'll, we'll do it live because it's kind of quite fun to be live, isn't it? So we'll see if we can do the whole dance. Um, and maybe we'll do it a couple of times. Because, um, you know, one of the issues you get with dances like this, tabering for them, is you actually got, you've got to have that dance kind of in your head. You, you need to be dancing it in your head. You need to actually know what they're going to do next so that you can support and lift and taber correctly. So let's have a little run through of the sequence. So the sequence, and this is all on the web page as well, the, 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 the dance instructions. So basically, um, uh, yeah, in, in any Morris dance, you, you've got a once to yourself of some sort. So we'll, we'll just, in this case, we'll play, um, we'll play uh, an A um, for Ollie to start with. And then he's gonna do his foot up <clears throat> two A's. He's going to do his clapping to a B. Uh, we're going to have the, um, the salutes. Um, and then, um, then we're going to have the side steps. Then we're going to have uh, another foot up. Um, uh, it's going to happen. Then we're going to have some more clapping. Then we've got the, um, the double capers. You remember the uh, that thing. Then we've got um, some more side steps. We got foot up again, clapping again, and then we finish with the upright capers. So that's the uh, that's the sequence. Okay, let's um, let's give him. Uh, we'll give him one, uh, a single A once to yourself, and we'll just take the whole thing. Here we go. Ready and. Oh, hang on is he no he's not ready yet <laughs> okay we'll give him we'll give him two a's introduction okay
Well, that was once through. Should we do, as we got four minutes, let's do it one more time because we need to get Ollie fit for the uh, his post-lockdown release. So one more time, same again. So it's going to be two A's introduction. Ready? Here we go. And... Aha! Right, that's it. Um, I think we're now open to uh, general discussion and chat. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, bring everybody into the um, room, so uh, you'll all appear on the screen. I'm just going through the list, gradually people are appearing, and I'll take the spotlight off um, Andy so that um, we can see everybody. Some familiar faces here. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> and um, yeah. you can go into um, gallery mode if you like, um, and then that will uh, mean that um, everybody can say hi. And uh, you can um, put up your hand if you uh, if you want to ask a question. And let's see, Peter. Still, I still haven't got Peter in yet. There we are. I think he's just going, coming in. There, there we go. So you can stick up your hand um, if you want to ask a question. There's Darren there. Yeah, Darren. Okay, Darren. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. Uh, it's a really good session. This um, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. My question is, what's the best material for your pipe to be made out of for when you're doing Morris outside in the open air? Which is the okay. Loudest. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so these these gener these generation pipes actually work really well um, outdoors for Morris and uh, Russell Wortley, who was my mentor. He he just he he got these made by generation, and um, and he just never used anything else. So these these are really very very good. Um, that, that's the brass one, isn't it? That one for outdoor use. Yeah. The other the other thing that I I uh, use a lot outdoors is. Um, is a, a loud wooden tabor pipe. And um, Mark Binns is the person who makes the loudest ones. Um, he's a maker in Australia. And um, there are some other pipes that, that are almost as loud as well, which are made in England. So various English makers make pipes that are perhaps about 90% of the volume of his pipe, of his loud 
ID pipe. Is there a list of makers on the Pet Tabra's website? Yeah, yeah there's, <clears throat> there's a list of makers. And um, Mark Bins, uh, the one, if you order from him, he does different uh, different pipes. But if you say it's for Morris for England, he knows which one because I worked with him to, to define that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is very yeah. accurate. Yeah. So, so, so it makes so that so for, if it was to contact Mark Bins and I wanted a Morris pipe, there's one already off the shelf that it, it knows, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, you, just, you just say, um, uh, you have to say which key because um, uh, ob obviously most of us do do play on the high D one. That's a really good one for, for outdoor Morris use. He does, if, you, if you're in a situation uh, where you've got to play with other instruments, um, then uh, he does also do loud outdoor ones in other keys as well. Um, so, I, for example, I've got one, a loud outdoor one in G that I use for Taylor's Morris when I'm not playing on the high, high D one. But yeah. high D one is coming. A C sharp pipe is quite good for getting rid of the other instruments. <laughs> yes, that's true. The um, Alan McArdle says that Susato <laughs> plastic pipes are pretty loud too. Oh, excellent. States. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's correct. Yeah. I mean, if you ever go to a group of tech pipe taperers, what they they spend a lot of time doing is having lots of nerdy um, uh, conversations about their pipes and just trying <laughs> each other's. I don't know what they're going to do post COVID now. Trying each other's pipes and uh, going, oh yes, that's very nice, and so on, and uh, saying, oh, I like this brand or I like that brand. <laughs> so it can can be, um, you know, what what um, uh, ever you like. Yeah. Um, Alan also asks, he's got a side drum, which is going to take some adapting. Any advice on how to adapt it? Oh, gosh. Um, well, uh, ta tabers are amazingly, um, they're, they're an amazingly uh, personal thing in terms of the, the, the sound that, 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 you, uh, that you want. Um, so... Yeah, it's. Um, I, I I would personally say that it, it it's very important to get a really good head, really good quality head. So uh, you can get hold of um, best English calf skin from from uh, suppliers who sometimes take um, broken instruments from uh, from orchestral um, drums and recycle them. So my uh, my best tabor is is made from the Welsh National Opera best English calf skin. So get a really good quality um, skin. Um, so uh, I think he's, show, he's, he's showing you there, he's on the bottom left. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so he's got a side drum. I think Alan, if you can, if you, yeah, you've got a plastic head, okay. No, um, no that's a calf head, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. Calf head? Oh, is it? Okay. It's a calf head, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too different from the the Basque style tabba, which a lot of Morris players use. Um, and yeah. um, I've um, I'll, I'll go and get, I'll get get one. Have you got a Have you got a snare on it? Yes, I do. There is yeah, a... so, so the snare is usually the side that you play. So the batter head is where the snare yeah. is on tradition by by tabras. So snare drummers have the snare at the bottom. Whereas tabras play hit the hit the head with the snare on it. Oh, oh, oh unmute, unmute, unmute. I've used it both ways. So. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. It still sounds yeah. better sometimes. Yeah, it's. I mean, the sound is is very much a personal opinion. Um, I think I think one key thing to think about when you're thinking about playing for Morris is uh, how are you going to get a crisp sound that that propels somebody into the air and um and then how are you going to taper for the steps is it the sort of sound that's going to work well for that and and is it a sound that you like the sound of really and then you can adjust you know you can adjust the amount of tension and all of that kind of jazz and, and also the tension of the, the snare as well you can even put little dampeners on if you if, if you want to do that very personal thing i think Oh, look at Jason's one there. Yeah, Jason's got a dampener there. Look, <laughs> I've got um, I've got some tatters and a piece of ribbon tried across it, and I did so adapted something this weekend where I've got 
um, an old flannel with two pieces of ribbon there and I move it around the back of it and it dampens it more or less where you push it to on the back of here which works quite well I'm quite pleased with the result of, of that one this weekend oh brilliant so, so the, I used to be one for dampening now I'm completely the other way around I spend <laughs> quite a lot of time playing in in Europe and you understand the reason for the snare is to make a real sustained sound. So you get the beat from the drum hit, but you get that rattle. I actually haven't got it as loose as I usually do. I usually like to have it really, so it's like a continuous rattling sound or barking sound as you go. <laughs> um, and uh, in uh, some of the musicians, I, some of the musicians I, I meet, actually have a very small bell attached to it. So it continues to rattle. And the idea is that it sounds like three instruments. You've got the, the pipe, the beat of the drum, and the drone of the rattle in the same way that you have a drone on a, on a hurdy-gurdy or bray harp or whatever. Sorry about the dog here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a very personal thing, all of that. Um, yeah, and, and, and often pe people end up with more than one tabor for different situations as well. <laughs> yes, he d has, yes. <laughs> yeah, do we have any more questions? Um, I've got a technical question, which is, yeah. I didn't see Ollie at all in the workshop. Ah, was okay. I meant to? Was I meant to be able to see Ollie dancing? Because that's what I expected. Um, yes, it was possible in some circumstances, maybe it's the yeah. Really you, you'll, get, you'll get, you can have many hours of of, of oliness through the magic of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to ring him up; he's just there. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's because I logged on through Zoom and maybe no, I was supposed. To... No, no. The yeah. So um, there is a video uh, which uh, Andy and Ollie recorded as a precursor to this workshop. For everybody to see and you can go back to see it and um maybe i'll just do a quick share screen now um i did actually think that perhaps uh, andy was going to refer to it right at the beginning <laughs> but um there we go you can actually see on this video andy and um uh, playing and ollie dancing at the same time by the magic of um of youtube uh so um yeah so uh, uh, you can refer back to that and you'll have, be able to play along with him now. Yeah, and another thing you can do with these things, of course, is you can turn the sound down and you, you can be the person who's playing, which is kind of quite, quite good practice. Was that your Mark Vins pipe on that video? No, on that one, I'm, I'm actually using my um, Purple Hearts pipe made by... Um, uh, 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 yeah, Barry uh, Barry Lloyd, Purple Heart pipe. Yeah, which is I I, I use that because it disturbs the neighbours less. You see, if I was playing in a performance, I'd I'd use the Mark Bins because it's it's a lot louder than that one. Yeah. Any more questions? I think generally the the Generation pipe works really really well as a Morris pipe because it's loud and it carries over the top of everything. Yeah, it does. Uh, true. They're, they're not good indoors. But listen, <laughs> outdoors they do their business, <laughs> and they're only about a ten or a go. So um, you know, you, if you lose one, you can always get another mm. one. What's better, nickel or brass? Um, well, I I was just trying just before this. I was just trying these two, and I couldn't really decide between them. So. Yeah, they they kind of. Incredibly similar, really. I think it's a fashion <laughs> statement. <laughs> yes, I suppose this goes with my kit better than this, really. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Any more questions? I've, I've, um, I've popped into the chat the uh, YouTube video link for Ollie and Rich and um, Holly and Andy. Yeah, and, and of course the, the sheet music and the dance instructions are on the web page as well. Yeah, and um, for people to look at those. And uh, Steve put in the web link for the um, sheet music 
earlier in the chat because I don't think Lola could find it. Uh, okay. So whereabouts are you, Lola? What part of Italy are you? I'm not sure she's still here. Yeah. She... No, no, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, everybody. I live in Tuscany. Uh, where everybody does Morris dancing. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I started because of historic uh, of historical matters. Because I like to reenact. So oh. that's the why. Hmm. And I was thinking, are there silencers? To play indoor. <laughs> yes, you can just cover the uh, window very slightly with a piece of um, a piece of tape, half yeah. of the window, and yeah. that will reduce the volume. Oh, thank you. Because if yeah. not, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I get mad inside. <laughs> blue tech's more flexible than the tape, I find. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's great. A great idea. I hope it. <laughs> there we go, you can see. <laughs> you can hear it's not quite so loud. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I copy it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the, the other thing you can do, of course, for indoor use is, is use bigger pipes that are, are kind of a bit softer sounding, oh. Low, lower pipes. So you can. You can use, um, for example, a, a pipe in G, which will be, it will take more, more breath.